I know you have the best friend ever. You guys are gonna do the most amazing project collaboration together. You just are bursting with excitement and can't wait to get started. Well, please pay attention to this video because I personally have been in those shoes, not once, not twice, probably more times than I care to admit. And I've also lived through one incredibly messy business divorce. And trust me, you do not want to go through a business divorce, which is having to rip apart an existing collaboration or partnership. So that is what I'm going to help you see in the midst of all your euphoric bliss of, well, no, 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 this is gonna be a fabulous project. I'm sure it will be, so please pay attention. I like to start with a trigger point so that you know whether this is gonna to apply to you in the slightest. So if you are interviewing people for a podcast, interviewing them for your YouTube channel, having them guest blog post, running a virtual summit together, running a retreat together, running a course together, bringing people into your membership to contribute content. All of those are instances where you are technically working together. There is a collaboration of some sort. You need to pay attention to this video now. And even if you are not doing it today, Put it in as a Netflix watch because when the time comes, you are going to be so thankful that you're like, oh, I don't have to go through a messy business divorce because I paid attention to that crazy lady on YouTube all those many, many, many months or years ago. So let's dive in. I'm going to walk you through it and I think you'll be entertained as we go. Okay, step one is identifying potential partners, potential collaborators. Now, for some of you, you've already picked this person, you've already been on a few Zoom calls, you may are already, you know, swapping Canva designs back and forth. You also might be someone who's we're moving a little bit more slowly in terms of finding the right person, who do you really want to work with, what is going on. Now, in step two, which we'll get to in just a second, I'm going to do a little bit more about what kind of working together is this, because that is really, really important to identify. When I say working together, we have the far extreme of you are truly legal partners in terms of combining money and legal responsibilities and taxes. And you have something at the other end, which is far more, hey, we're going to do a series of videos together and we're going to toss them up on YouTube or we're going to, you know, each share some blog posts on each other's site. Like collab working together has a broad definition. So the person that I might want to be a legal partner with, which in my case, that's the one that I talk about when I talk about my business divorce. Thankfully, we stopped before legal and financial and taxes were woven together, but it was at the one yard line. And then at the other end, you you can be, I don't wanna say more forgiving, but it's different. You know, the person that I'm doing some, uh, let's say a five part video series with over here that might live on YouTube is very different than someone that I'm bringing into the legal, financial and tax aspects of my business. So when you are looking at that, I always say, when someone shows you their true colors, believe them. Have your eyes open. If you see someone, you're like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. And then you see them do something that you're like, hmm, it's a little odd. But then you go, oh, but they'll be fine with me. No, just stop right there. When someone shows you their colors, pay attention, pay close close attention, have people around you, especially if you're trying to like do a very tightly woven deal, make sure you're getting the right person because it's really important. And people are, they don't change their colors. They really don't. Someone that is completely disorganized and 45 minutes late for an appointment is always going to be completely disorganized and maybe 30 minutes late for an appointment. So you can find these people 
anywhere. You could find someone, uh, you know, at a restaurant that you bump into and you strike up a conversation and who knows where it goes. You could have an introduction where someone knows both of you from either side and is like, hey, I think you guys might be on to something. Any other, you know, home edit friends here? Because that's exactly what happened. You can meet them at networking events. You could meet them in a Facebook group. You could meet them, honestly, anywhere. But as you are looking at this, please, please, please just keep your eyes open because identifying the potential right person means when you see things, don't sweep them under the rug, okay? It doesn't mean they're a bad person, not in the slightest. It just means, hmm... This, if this only gets worse from here on out, am I still okay with it? So that is step one, identifying the right people. And once you've identified them, pay very, very, very close attention to all that makes up that person. All right, step number two is define. Define your words, define the scope, define the objectives because words matter. And this is where I and my once thought dreamy partner, we did come, we were completely defunct in this area because we were so excited. So the reason that this is important and I am going to just scroll through, this is the Bizzlebox prenup program. If you want information on it, it's in the description or you can scan the code, but you have to define the words because when I say, oh, we're working together, what does that mean? What does working together mean? Does it mean we wrote a blog post together or does it mean we truly put our money in the same bank account and we want to weave these things together? The scope and the objective is incredibly important. You have to ask the questions. I've highlighted a couple of them um, here because if you don't, one, I can save you about, mm, let's say, two and a half years of your life because that's about what I, let's say, I don't think it was wasted time. I think it was invested time because I can now share with you my 2020 hindsight on this. No pun in intended. Thank you, pandemic. But having to think through all of these pieces, we were so caught up in the excitement of the project, in the excitement of doing the work, in the excitement of selling it to customers, all of those pieces that we were like, oh, we'll get to it. Oh, we'll get to it. Okay, lawyer here, lawyer here, totally knew better, did not do better. And let's just highlight this for an instance. As I'm creating something, who owns the content? If we're both dumping stuff into this, who owns it? Now, some of these questions are going to kind of probably make you go, I, I don't want to ask that. Like, mm, they're going to think I don't trust them or they're going to think I'm not nice. No, they are going to think you are the smartest, wisest, most on top of it person they have encountered because people that take the time to define the scope and the objectives with specificity are people that want to protect things. They want them to succeed. They want them to move forward and that is the person that you want to be in a partnership with, in a collaboration with. So number two is incredibly important. There's lots of different areas that this is going to come into play for sure, but you absolutely, you have to be specific when you are defining what is going into this partnership, who owns what, who is paying what, how are things getting paid, all of those million and, you know, gazillion decisions that you make on a daily basis, again, all across the spectrum. Don't need as much input over here when it's a looser partnership collaboration than I do at the other end where I'm literally blending legal, financial, and taxes together. I am always so curious, and I probably drive my husband and my kids nuts with this, but in the comments below, tell me what is a word that if you said, hey, Tamson, what does this mean that the chances of you and I having not the exact same definition 
are highly likely. I'm gonna put some of my favorite ones in the comment below so you can see them, but it will drive home the point our words matter. You are at a point where you get to decide what those words mean for you, for the people that you want to work with, and there is nothing better. So I, I'm really looking forward to seeing if the words that I are always my biggest offenders, um, if you have some of the same biggest offenders. Okay, so closely, closely, closely tied to number two of defining your words, being very particular about your specifics, is to establish a legal framework. Contracts are your friends. The best contracts never need to be turned on because you talked through all the aspects of the agreement. You negotiated them. You, and negotiating can be having a good discussion back and forth. It doesn't have to be some crazy thing that you might expect to see, I don't know, on an episode of Suits or something like that. But a contract, a legal framework for what you are doing is essential. It is so incredibly important. And when I'm working with any of my clients, when we're working inside PBK or Bizzlebox, the first thing I tell them is start with the contract. Start with the contract because if you're being approached to be in a collaboration with someone, it doesn't matter what they say. That, you know, talking, blah, 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 it doesn't matter. What matters is what is in that collaborator agreement. What is in that guest contributor agreement? What is in the blank agreement? Okay, fill in the blank with whatever it is. Now, this is where you will most often find people go, oh, we're gonna get to that. We're working on it. We have somebody doing that right now. I'm sure you do. I will believe you. However, I'm also an attorney who's been around long enough to know they're not always working on it. Nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, your question just added to their to-do list, oh crap, I better go get one of those. In which case, they're hopping over to Google as soon as they stop emailing you, talking to you, chatting with you, whatever the case may be. The reason is the document that's going to dis control any disagreements, humans are involved, there's always disagreements. There's less disagreements when we have a legal framework. When I start with a contract, it will go through who are the parties to the contract? What is the business? What is the person? It will put in timelines. It will put in where are disputes handled? Let's say I live here in the States and I decide to do a project with someone in, let's say, Europe and I don't have anything in place. We have a disagreement. They decide to sue or somehow get legal resolution. If we don't have anything in place, guess what? I get to go defend myself in Europe, which means I'm either taking myself to Europe or I now have to go find and hire a solicitor in Europe. Not fun, highly expensive, don't want it. So establish your legal framework anytime you are working with people. This is a very easy thing to do. Let's say you are interviewing people for your blog. Start with a guest contributor agreement because you are working with people. You are taking in their intellectual property and you're distributing it. So that is, it doesn't need to be big. It doesn't need to be scary. It doesn't need to be intimidating at all. You must have a legal framework that outlines roles, responsibilities, expectations, the, um, liabilities, the guarantees, the jurisdiction, all of that gets woven into your agreement, okay? Closely tied to number two. And bonus little insight, if you are being approached about being in collaborations, the quickest way to figure out if you want to be a part of it is just to say, so exciting, would love to work with you. Could you just forward me your sample guest agreement? And if you get one, I am going to be so, so excited. That business owner is on top of their game. And if not, you have now put the ball back in their court, in which case you are professional, you are polite, you are still interested. They 
are going to get their ducks in a row and come back to you. Okay, you might think at first blush that this is a rather silly thing. I am telling you, I have seen more partnerships disintegrate over this than maybe any of the other areas. And that is because communication is fundamental to working with someone. If I am someone who wants to do everything via a phone call, when I call, I expect you to answer the phone, take the call, and not hang up until we've resolved it, that is going to be in complete conflict with someone who would prefer that I write it all out in an email that goes on for days and days and days, or that I send a quick text message with just some emojis. All of those are communication styles. Now, when you're working with people, you're going to have a wide variety, okay? Different decisions will require different things. I am talking about when you're working with someone, and again, remember our spectrum, all the way from, hey, let's do some guest posting together, to, yep, let's put our names on contracts and names on bank accounts and pay our taxes, we're blending it together, okay? Always a spectrum, facts and circumstances matter, big time. But when you are working with someone, the closer to the blended end of everything is together, you need to be on the same page. If you are someone who expects phone calls and return phone calls and your partner is an emoji texter, you guys are going to get in a lot of fights. I'm, you are. Plain and simple, you are going to get in a lot of fights. If you are someone who writes 10-page long emails and gets a reply of two sentences consistently, you guys are going to have some serious fights. So part of going through when you're working with people is being clear on the expectations and being upfront with, no, I am not taking your phone call. Or it had better be an emergency if you use the phone to call me. Everything else can be voice memos on a text or short emails. Whatever the case may be, you need to establish not just the method, you also then need to say, okay, do we need a do we need a platform for this? Do we need a Slack channel? Do we, you know, want to use um, Voxer? Like those are more minutia details. I am what I see when people are disintegrating and starting to have fights. Yes, there's there are deeper underlying issues. However, it is the communication paths that exacerbate the effect. They make it heightened. They make it bigger than it is because the person that poured out their heart in the 10 page single spaced email and gets a two sentence reply, they're ticked off. The person that gets the two, the, that sends two sentence emails and has to read the big email, one now with chat GPT, they're probably taking the big email popping it into chat GPT and saying, summarize this in 30 words or less for me. That's, I can see them doing that for sure. But do you see the clash? Okay, those clashes are important, big time. Okay, now step five, which is setting up and putting together what are going to be your key performance indicators or KPI for short, your goals, your objectives, your, I like to call them mile markers because here in the States, all, you know, our freeways will say mile 42, mile 43, mile 44. So it's just that regular interval check-in. That's what I'm referring to in this step. When you set out to do something, you need measure, what are we measuring this by? How do we know if it's a quote unquote success? How do we know if we want to do it again? How do we know if we want to put ad dollars behind it, take away ad dollars? So when you are putting together a collaboration, you need to make sure that you have a measuring stick, your KPIs, um, I've listed some of them out. Um, you can check it out on the blog or just scan the code and unlock the bonus content and resources for this video anytime. You need to know those things because if you don't, you're just like, well, I think it's kind of sort of working. Mm. Okay, again, depending on the level of involvement. But in this instance, I find that having those key performance indicators at 
what I'll call more loosely, you know, put together collaborations. Um, and in fact, this shows up huge, 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 huge. Can't even tell you how many this shows up. People are like, oh, I want you to come and be a guest because I have this massive audience and I can, you know, do all of these amazing things for you. OK, so what are we're going to try this out for three months, six months, a year, whatever the case may be. You'll know real quick. OK, we're going to track how many true opt ins come from your promotion of this thing. We're going to track how many sales come from this thing. We're going to track how many downloads from this thing, because there are lots of people with very, very, very big audiences. And my uh, this is my unofficial way, but very observationally based. The louder you have to tell me how big your audience is, the smaller your audience really, really is. So keep that in mind, but set out what are the performance indicators that you want to use, knowing these can change. You don't have to go all in and have, you know, 10 KPIs. You can go in and pick, we're gonna have two. We're gonna start with two. We're gonna start with three. Whatever the objective and the goal is, Pick something that lines up and complements that. Okay, that is the best advice that I can give you when it comes to working with other people. If you would like me to make a video going through my own messy business divorce, let me know. I haven't done so before and I can change names to protect all of us, um, but this is important. It is important for guest contributors. It is important when you're interviewing people on a podcast. And it is most definitely important if you decide to do things like run virtual summits together or build a product together or run a retreat together. All of those are instances where you really, 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 unless you're willing to gamble with your own personal money, your personal relationships, your personal legal obligations, I am not willing to do that. Uh, this can go really badly, incredibly fast. My own business partnership, literally after two and a half years, completely disintegrated in less than 72 hours. So on that pleasant note, thank you for watching. Next video is all ready for you. Bye.